Imagine what it would be like if you could wake up in your New York City apartment at 7 a.m. and make it to your job in London, England by 9.30 in the morning. That would be a possibility if we dug tunnels between the two continents. Just try not to get sick. Believe it or not, something like this is possible. But how would we make a tunnel like this? And how much would it cost? This is what if. And here's what would happen if we dug tunnels between continents. That's right, a tunnel like this is possible. I mean, a tunnel that's similar to this already exists. It's called the Channel Tunnel, or Channel. And in just about 35 minutes, you can drive from England to France. Without it, you'd have to take either a ferry or a plane. Compared to what we'd be building, the Channel is tiny at just over 50 kilometers. Our tunnel would be over 5,500 kilometers if we wanted to go from New York to London. So, how would we make our tunnel? Let's use the Channel Tunnel as an example of what our tube might look like to give us some context. The Channel Tunnel took six years to build, and it also took decades of planning before that. As for the price, if we were to build another channel today, it would cost a whopping $13 billion. Okay, now multiply these numbers by 100, as that's how much bigger our tunnel would be, and you get the idea. This thing would take an incredibly long time and would cost a ridiculous amount of money. But let's assume we've got all this covered and we have unlimited time and money. Just because we have enough resources doesn't mean we should be stupid in how we use them. If we tried to avoid all the water and went underneath the seafloor, we'd have to bore through the ground from England all the way to America. This would take an incredibly long time. And there's always the possibility that the tunnel we built more than 5,000 meters underwater would cave in from the ocean's pressure. Instead, the best way to make the tunnel might be like this. You would make one massively long 5,500 kilometer tube and put it over the ocean. Then, using anchors, you would drag the tube down about 45 meters. You would then secure the tube using wires tied to the ocean's floor. Okay, now that we have our tunnel, what do we fill it with? Will we drive through it? Pfft, that's so 21st century. Instead, we'll be taking a train. I know, I know, that might sound even more old school than using a car, but this won't be just a regular train. To travel through our tube so quickly, we'd need to use vac trains. This system would essentially act as a vacuum that would take all the air out of the tube. This would allow the train to travel at incredibly high speeds due to there being little or no air resistance. Not only that, but our train would also be levitating using high-powered magnets or with air, kind of like an air hockey table. Where are my Canadians at? After propelling the train forward with a high-powered engine, it could cruise for hundreds if not thousands of kilometers since there's no friction to stop it. With this little resistance, the VAC train can go up to 8,000 kilometers per hour. But we won't be going that fast as that could be incredibly dangerous. Not just for the train, but for your physical well-being. Instead, you'd be going about 2,000 kilometers, which is almost double the speed of sound. But don't be too alarmed by this. Your body should be able to handle it just fine. After all, the Concorde passenger jet flew this fast for years before it was decommissioned. So, it is possible that we'll see a pipe that connects across the Atlantic Ocean one day. As long as we have enough money, time, and resources. Now, imagine that the supersonic train actually exists and we could casually travel from Europe to America in just under an hour. Think about how industry, our economy, and travel would change. But what if we never even had to travel from Europe to America, as the land masses were already connected? Well, that sounds like a story for another What If.